As far as how OSD and Operation Supply Drive and Games to Grunts works, um, a lot of it at its core is it's just normal business practices. So one of our biggest successes, and it's a lot of why I even joined the team years ago, was to build an actual business. Uh, I believe you know philanthropic endeavors are are huge and certainly important, uh, but I believe you can also be almost almost misdirected by bleeding heart passion if that's the only thing that's led. And so when we look at Operation Supply Drop, for instance, when it's delivering video game care packages overseas, at its most basic sense, it's a supply chain and logistics company. You have uh, troops that are deployed, uh, you know, making a request. And again, we always do it at the unit level, not the individual level. And we're working on fulfillment. And part of that supply chain is, you know, utilizing donations to secure uh, video games, board games, consoles, because, you know, when we're talking, you know, badass um you know, care packages, we mean it. I mean, you're getting uh, these days, like the ones we just pushed out last week, uh, was typically uh, two Xboxes. I think we're pushing 50 or so physical games, um, probably 20 pounds of coffee, some ice shakers, uh, gunner glasses. Again, just really cool stuff. That's what we're looking at. Now, on the Games to Grunt side, um, that's actually my favorite program. It's the world's first and only verified video game dispensary for veterans. So kind of, you know, wrap your mind around that. Um, but at its core, it's really just an e-commerce site, uh, similar to something like a humble.com or fanatical. The difference is that it's a benefit. So as long as you're an ID.me verified service member or veteran, you can go on there and you're, you're able to benefit from that. And so really you're looking at, you know, the success is taking those just general concepts that typically don't exist or aren't well executed inside of the nonprofit space and doing that and keep trying to improve, keep trying to iterate. And at this point, um, we're actually getting ready to do what in the for-profit space would look like a Series A raise specific for games to grunts because we're going to you know, further build out and further hire for that particular program. It'll have you know, uh, partnership development, uh, additional support, build the platform out further. And again, those are principles that we would all see in all of the the for-profit endeavors. And being able to build a team and have amazing support in and of itself for us to get to this point of being around for almost 12 years um, is a success in and of itself. Probably the most fun I've ever had uh, while inside of OSD, and I've done a lot of just cool stuff, um, not me, just been a part of it is really the thing I would say, uh, was when we shot a commercial with Travis Pastrana. So, uh, you know, if anybody if doesn't recognize the name, uh, he's Nitro Circus, Motocross, uh, Rallycross. I mean, just just a badass dude. He's also just a good a good guy. He's about my same age, family man, uh, has kids, but he's just he's a he's also a big kid himself. But anyways, the the story about what makes it so fun is where it started from. So this was. I can't pinpoint the years a few years ago when we actually had the major flooding here in central Texas. And I had just taken our son to outdoor school out at camp champions on Lake LBJ. And I think, you know, the first night we get there, it's pouring down rain, which was funny. The next morning I get this call um, from Xbox, from Microsoft, and they were pitching me on this idea for a commercial to bring OSD into and what was funny is we're under NDA, but I get these calls all the time. It's like, t what do you actually want? What are you asking? And there was things like, you know, do you, do you know anybody that likes motocross or extreme sports and X games? Like, yeah, of course, like almost anybody with a pulse in this, you know, at least can enjoy it and kind of got them to say, you know, what we actually want and like, well, we want to shoot a commercial for Christmas, um, that includes Travis Pastrana delivering a supply drop to a veteran. And what's funny, and, and anybody listening to this that is in production will get a kick out of you know taking an idea into reality. And oftentimes, the people that do the ideas don't understand the reality of playing it out. And they wanted a you know they're like just you know so let's surprise a veteran, or we want to bring a service member. Well, there's all sorts of weird logistics with that. You know, number one. I can't just go grab an active duty service member because this would be um, misusing their role, as, as they would say, as far as like how the, the, the laws are around the military. And I didn't want to grab some random veteran because we're shooting a commercial. Like they can be surprised, but they're going to be on camera. They're going to be speaking. They're not going to one shot their lines. Um, in the same way, you know, it probably dates me if you look at Ed McMahon delivering, you know, the checks um, for Publishers Clearinghouse. 
very often those are not the first shot when we would see those. That was the third, fourth, fifth, and they were having to act like it. And if you know that, you can see it. But anyways, the other part was, who am I going to convince, this was being shot out in Florida, to fly, you know, meet me in Florida, and then um, day two, hop in a Jeep, I'm going to drive out the middle of the Florida swamps for this surprise. You know, no, I'm not going to murder you. Um, but it was just funny. So anyways, it's kind of the lead up of this in and of itself was, was hilarious. But anyways, we get there. Um, it was on this just amazing ranch. It had to be a private airstrip because Nitro Circus, these guys just jump out of airplanes over and over and over. In this particular one, he was, again, delivering a supply drop. You know, that's our parlance for a care package uh, in the form of it was the Xbox One X Battlefield 5 Gold Edition. Um, I can tell you that he screwed up just that even probably a hundred different times, uh, which was comical. But it was probably one of the most fun days in my life because I got to help direct the commercial. Uh, I was there with um, just my guy, uh, Jeff Bartram, um, a, a good dude, a Navy veteran, a good friend of mine. Uh, had Travis and then I think it was two of his jump buddies. And then he had kind of his one man production crew and literally... I mean, just putting this thing together and also being trusted to essentially speak on behalf of Xbox is they didn't have a representative there to ensure they had the right lines in it all for this, you know, what was it, 60 second commercial. So, again, anybody that's in production knows how fun it is to go get eight hours. But he had I think he did uh, four jumps to make it happen, to put this thing together. But the best part and I can go on and on about this. This day was so amazing was there was a shot that was on the on the storyboards um, where he needed to be holding the Xbox like up over his head. And so if we were to do that jumping from the plane, you'd see a GoPro here looking up and you know it's shake. And I think in the final video, it's maybe a half a second, but it really tells the story. Well, they forgot to get that. There's storms rolling in and there was no way they, they couldn't figure it out. And I said, I was like, wait a second, we're on a ranch. Is there a leaf blower anywhere? And no kidding, we go get this leaf blower, super high powered, and he's sitting there. One of his guys is like down between his legs. It's I mean, you, you, it's as hilarious as you can imagine, blowing the leaf blower up in his face. And he's just standing there on the ground, shaking the Xbox above his head uh, to get this one shot. And the fact that that made it in the final cut was huge because it's the story behind it. I think that's why a lot of, you know, myself included, like I love storyboarding. Uh, you know, commercials, documentaries, those sorts of things, both inside of OSD and outside of it, because there's just these funny stories behind the stories, these inside jokes, and it's just how business is. So I don't think you could ever recreate that day. And, you know, just the other bonus of literally sitting down with him for, I don't know, probably three straight hours as we were waiting for some stuff to happen uh, with this home cooked meal by this wonderful um, husband and wife whose ranch it was, just, you know, talking about kids, talking about life and having fun. And, you know, and then at the end of it, um, I was just joking. He had these awesome, like custom um, camo van shoes, you know, uh, low tops. And I was just giving a hard time. I walked up next to him because he and I are almost identical in height and everything. I said, oh, it looks like you have the same size shoes as me. I swear I was not trying to take his shoes. Next thing I know, he's like, oh, you want them? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take them. So now I've got, you know, the other thing to show um, as kind of artifacts from this amazing day was um, the signed uh, Xbox prop uh, by, you know, Travis Pastrana, number 99, and then the pair of those uh, camo vans that he used for his jump shoes uh, for that day. So um, again, it's hard to create those kind of memories, but it's, it's one of the benefits of, I think, a lot of why, you know, myself and many of us do um, a lot of these entrepreneurial endeavors is you find yourself in these different situations half the time because we don't know any better. We just we know when to say yes. We know when to say no. And when something lands in your lap that's super badass, you just, you know, hang on, go for the ride and be ready to tell the story afterwards. What's particularly interesting about OSD and what inspires me to do this is it really goes back to kind of looking at diverging paths of when we're a bit younger. So, um, yeah, I'm in my 40s now and you can kind of backtrack some timelines with relation to 9-11, um, the greater war on terror, and even how here in the U.S. we've deployed a lot more of our National Guard over the years, and then the subsequent mental health challenges that have happened because of all of that stuff. Uh, in my particular case, though, really where what I like to focus on, though, is when I made the conscious decision to leave high school and go to college or leave college and go um, into the workforce, 
I know a lot of my peers chose to go and volunteer for the military. And during that time where they're, again, they're volunteering. And again, I think a lot of people misunderstand kind of what the military is, is its core. I mean, the military, yes, um, we go, we go do war. Uh, we, we protect our freedoms and, and all, all, all that good stuff. But we also, uh, our military has some of the greatest uh, technology innovations that we all take advantage of. A lot of medicine, um, its advances are thanks to the military. And the majority of the military is not door kickers. They're, they're normal people like, like you and I. And when that divergence happens, I, if I so choose, am able to begin building this network that every day, every year gets me further and further ahead to where I have opportunities to, you know, sit in front of a camera and have a bunch of amazing people listen to this and hopefully answer out, you know, amazing questions. But, you know, my, my peer that joins the military does not have that. They form a brotherhood or a sisterhood, but it doesn't really transfer over once they transition out into, you know, civilian life or veteran life. And I've always found that one of the, the best things that I can do, and I really talk about this anytime I've got a mic in front of me when it comes to OSD and veterans, is I believe it's our responsibility when we have those diverging paths to help our brothers and sisters that served catch up with us. They don't have a usable network. I do. And I want to transfer that trust. And so because of that, I look at a lot of these, you know, now cliche um, but you know, veterans that serve typically have the ability to improvise, adapt, and overcome. You know, in comparison to, um, say, uh, a, a, a civilian of the same age and you know, supposedly on paper the same skill set, the veteran may have uh, more loyalty or may, more stick to itiveness. Again, at scale across the macro side of it, and again, that drive is to help bridge that gap because I think a lot of these individuals have just given so much of their time, sacrificed their, you know, relationship with their family, their friends. Uh, and I've not, I've been able to play and do things like shoot commercials with Travis Pastrana. So, um, that's a lot of what drives me. And then even deeper as we see a lot of these challenges, just not just with mental health in the veteran community. I don't think it's unique to veterans. I believe it's it's the same problems and same challenges across the broader uh, society, the, the broader slice of society is finding these other opportunities to decompress and to really improve one's mental health. And again, it's what works for me. You know, I've, I've been through a lot in my life and being able to have strong relationships with friends, a sense of community, finding, you know, what you love as far as play to decompress and detach, but then come back together and, and really, um, you know, make your mark on the world with your family and your job. That's what drives me. So it, it's it's almost it's not this one thing. It's really just built into the way I function. And you know, as opposed to Bible thumping people with it, it's figuring out like how can my actions inspire the next person to uh, commit and work with veterans, hopefully in the same way as I do, or their version of that same way.